Today you'll see how I painted this striped accent wall in our new nursery. Let's do it. One quick note. Somebody did point out that I could have easily used a laser leveler. <sighs> yeah, I suppose it would have saved a lot of time. However, I did it anyway without one. So let's get going. I started out thinking I'd paint the whole wall a base color. Then I thought it might save me time and paint if I laid out where the stripes would be first and painted only where the color needed to be. But you'll soon see why it didn't save me anything. Things started to get interesting when I realized my ceiling wasn't perfectly level. So I had to revisit some of my markings to make sure they were straight and the stripe sizes were consistent. With the lines marked, I rolled in the first color, which is the gray that matches the rest of the room, making sure I completely covered the markings by just a little bit. When those lines disappeared is when I realized it wasn't going to be such a time saver after all, because I just had to mark them all over again to lay out the tape. Learn from my mistake and remember this sweet rhyme I just made up. If the wall is this small, base color covers all. This time I measured from one point on the ceiling and used a level the whole way across to avoid the inconsistency of the ceiling. As long as the stripes were all 12 inches tall and the lines fell within the gray, I was good to go. I anticipated laying out the tape to be harder than it really was, so I called in my wife for some help, but it ended up being a one-person job. Thanks anyway, sweetheart. And that's where my first roll of tape ran out on me. One thing I'd recommend is a nice thick roll of painter's tape so that you can be confident rolling on the paint. Since I didn't have a smaller roller and I wasn't using the thickest tape, I went ahead and did the rest of the wall with a brush. It did take a bit longer because the brush left streaks and required a second coat, which I didn't record, but I think you get the gist. Cutting in can be a real drag, especially if you're like me and you refuse to go out and get the best product for it. I'm using a flat-ended 3-inch brush, which isn't exactly ideal for cutting in, but if you take your time, it can end up looking just fine. I've also never been one to try and tape off in wall and ceiling corners because of the imperfections in the drywall never lets me get the tape pressed down appropriately, and I always get bleeding and have to do it over anyway. Make sure the paint is sufficiently dry before you try putting on that second coat. It can be a little tacky. As long as none comes off onto your fingers when you touch it, you should be good to go. Removing that first line of tape and seeing your hard work pay off with that perfect divide is admittedly very satisfying. Marking the next set of stripes was a bit easier because of the care I took making sure the first set of stripes were all level and even. But there were still tiny inconsistencies here and there that I had to account for. The best way I can describe to go about marking and taping any lines is to take your time, check and recheck before you paint. In this case, I wanted a two and a half inch white stripe centered in the gray. So I held the ruler in a way that if there was any part that wasn't exactly 12 inches, I split the difference, marking down and up from the blue, and adjusted the end result to be two and a half inches. In this case, there was one gray stripe that was consistently an eighth of an inch too narrow all the way across. By centering that, oh wait, hang on, I gotta change my podcast. No, no, oh, hang on, where are they? No, no, uh, oh, here we go. Ha, yeah, love these guys. Okay, what was I saying? Ah, uh, yeah, um, if there happen to be any imperfections in your lines, just make sure to correct it on your new line from the center. That way the difference is far less noticeable. And now after you've painted in the final color, all that's left to do is remove the tape. In my experience, waiting until the paint is completely cured is too long. It should be just dry enough to touch and that's enough. If the paint is completely dry, and I'm talking hours and hours of dry time, sometimes the tape wants to hang on too hard and it'll take some of what's on the wall with it. 
Best practice would be to try it somewhere inconspicuous first, like the corner of a closet, and see what works best. So what did we learn today? We don't need a laser leveler to get this job done, but it definitely would have been easier and a lot faster. Don't reference your measurements from the ceiling. It's very likely that it isn't perfectly level. Instead, pick a point, use a traditional level to mark all the way across the wall. If you've done that line perfectly, you can then reference all your subsequent lines off of that one. Get a wide roll of painter's tape and make sure that you press down the seam that's blocking the paint very well. No ripples. You might be wondering why I didn't just tape off the existing white on the wall that would have saved me an entire step. Well, the paint on this wall was really old and dingy, and it didn't exactly match the palette and sheen that we had chosen for this room. So it was worth the extra step. Thanks for watching Do It! We post videos about the stuff we make and do that we think people like you might be interested in seeing or learning about. There's always something fun happening here, so consider subscribing. We'll see you next time.